In this video, we are going to talk about what perfectionism is costing you. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here. I don't want to scare you with this video at all. That is never my intention. Your fear brain is already way too active. This video really just came about because I genuinely had no idea what the impact of perfectionism was. I thought it was just a trait and it's a typical trait for the fearful avoidant. I think pretty much all fearful avoidants have a tendency towards perfectionism. Um, and I thought it was just inconvenient at best, but it also had so many good good sides, good aspects to it. So I never really thought too much about it, which is why I never mm, really worked very hard to heal that specific aspect of the fearful avoidant attachment style. But this was one of the things that um, was still something that I can like I, I ran into in in my daily life. Um, something that I still kind of struggled with and s still do. I am in the midst of, of healing it um, from the root. So that didn't come, that focus on healing perfectionism specifically, until I really understood what it is costing me. And that was such an eye-opener for me. And I think it is so important to know what the things that we... Um, struggle with uh, the coping mechanisms and the protection mechanisms of which perfectionism, perfectionism is just one, um, what they do in our daily life because it just gives a little bit more motivation but also perspective and it, it also shows you what life can be like when um, you've healed that. So perfectionism is something I think that is talked about more and more and I think that is because perfectionism is of all ages it has always been there i think but what is different now is that we especially my generation our generation <laughs> um is dealing with multi-dimensional perfectionism and i don't know who coined that phrase i tried to look it up but i couldn't find one specific source um but what that means is that we don't now expect ourselves to be perfect just in our job or just as uh, a mother or a father, we expect ourselves to be perfect in every single area or in multiple areas. So it's multi-dimensional. We want to have the perfect career. We want to be perfect um, in our work and, and in our success in our career. Uh, we want to be the perfect parent, the perfect spouse. We want to have the perfect spouse. We want to have the perfect marriage or relationship. Uh, we want to have the perfect house. We want to be perfectly happy. So there's just a lot of perfectionism going on in different areas. And when, when it is just one area, when you're a perfectionist just in your job, then that's focus. And that's probably still not attainable because nobody is perfect. And that's just not very realistic. But you can still get some gratification out of that and some sense of accomplishment. Um, but being perfect in every single aspect of your life, that just is a recipe for um, a lot of anxiety. And I think apart from the fearful avoidant attachment style, I think a lot of people right now are dealing with anxiety and um, with this feeling that they always have to do more and be more and uh, and work harder. And that that is costing you more than you think. So I started reading up on this um, because I realized that this was still something. It was, it was not something I struggled with every day, all day. Then I would have tackled it way earlier. It was just something that was kind of a pitfall for me when um, I felt like I... Uh, yeah, when did it, what did it trigger? I guess when I was kind of losing control in a way or when my daughter was born and that just came with so much added responsibility and I wanted to be a good parent, but then I kind of fell into the pitfall of wanting to be a perfect parent. So I guess it's it's in, that mo in those moments that it was still kind of a pitfall for mm -hmm. me. And so I started reading up on it more and more. And it was very, it was just 
it was such an epiphany because it, it just felt so natural to me to be a perfectionist because I have been that my entire life. And I have other videos about why you are a perfectionist and different types of perfectionism. So please do watch those. But it's very logical that as a fearful avoidant, you are a perfectionist or you have tendencies towards perfectionism. But because it just felt so comfortable and so natural to me, I didn't realize the impact it it had and it could have. And when I started reading about it, I saw all these articles and studies and also just anecdotes and stories of people who, um, who actually realized that the root of their clinical depression was perfectionism and when they when they healed that that depression faded um so it really it's an underlying factor for pretty much all the big mental health issues so depression anxiety um uh, ocd uh and i'm not saying that when you're a perfectionist that's what you will definitely um experience but it was an eye opener for me that, okay, wait, this perfectionism that feels so natural and normal and like home for me might actually have more impact than I realize. And at, at that point, at this point in my life, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm doing really well. I'm not, um, clinically depressed. Thank goodness. Um, but still it does have an impact on me and it might be more than I realize because it's just this is what I'm so used to seeing the world through a perfectionist lens if you if you will so that is what perfectionism can cost you clinical depression anxiety OCD it's this is like a common denominator under all of those mental health issues and then so that's a pretty that's a pretty big one uh right from the right off the bat but another thing is that being unhappy with what you have which is pretty much always the case when you're in that perfectionistic mindset um not appreciating what you have not being grateful for what you have it, it's not something you have to do but it is something that just brings so much joy and brings such a um a feeling of fulfillment and especially when it comes to people like not being very happy with your stuff being unhappy with your stuff and always wanting to buy more i don't think your stuff <laughs> that you have right now um minds but when it comes to our partners when we're unhappy with what we have and we always look out or um think of our fantasy partner the one that would take away all the pain that could really potentially hurt our partner and with our children and you know with the people around you not being happy or at least grateful for what you have is is not helping your relationships um and it's not helping yourself it's not helping you in having that feeling of peace and fulfillment and contentment from which you can still grow and learn but it's not from fear. It's from a place of everything is all right already and we can grow. I'll get back to that later. What it also does is it makes you feel like you are not worthy of the things you want, but you also end up always wanting more. So you might work really hard to get the things that you want, whatever it is, the perfect relationship, perfect house, perfect job, perfect, whatever. And then you do accomplish things, but it's never enough. There's always something more. And so you are always in this state of apparently I'm not worthy of that thing that I want. So you have something that is outside of you, like the perfect relationship or, or a thing that a thing that you actually want to buy, but you don't, you can't get to right now or you don't have the money. Um, you feel unworthy of that. You feel unworthy of what you don't have. And you work really hard and struggle really hard to get that. And that is then the feeling and the mindset that you are always in. I am not worthy. I am not worthy. I am not worthy of that thing that I want. 
of that feeling that I want, of that relationship that I want, of that house that I want, of that friendship that I want. And that is a pretty hard place to be in, to always feel like you are now worthy of that thing that you want. Because if this is how your fear brain thinks, if you would have been worthy, you would have had it. And that's just not how that works. What it also leads to or is costing you is chronic stress and unrest and panic. So when you want everything to be perfect, obviously you're going to run into many moments that are not perfect, many things that are not perfect on a daily basis. And when you have those perfectionistic tendencies, that will cause chronic unrest and stress and anxiety and, uh, and panic. Because everything has to be perfect before you can relax. And that is just not a sustainable way of living life. Because perfectionism is an illusion. And it is fear-based and fear-driven. Um, and it's just not attainable. And so you will keep spinning your wheels and uh, stay in this state of chronic unrest and, and panic. Like, oh, not everything is perfect. I still have to do so much. I have to work harder. I have to do more. I have to be more. While it is so important for you and for your body to be able to relax. Um, so those two things cannot really coexist. Being in a completely in a perfectionist state. And I, this is not black and white. There's, I think there's like a scale of being in that state kind of constantly. Like I was 12 years ago, it was 24 seven all the time obsessively trying to control everything and now i only have it now and then um and and stretches of time where i just am very able to relax and and feel good so there's like a there is a, a a scale i guess but um what was i saying i interrupted myself <laughs> and now i don't know what i was saying but that Oh yeah, so that's very important for your body to be able to relax and to let go and just allow what is to be there. And then what I didn't write down, but what comes up now is that when you don't allow things to be as they are, you always want them to be more, to be more perfect, to be better. You are missing the magic in what is here now. And there's only magic in what is here now. Even if to your fear brain, it is not perfect according to the image that you have of what it should be. The only way to experience magic is to be completely present in the here and now with whatever is and whatever isn't. So that's what it's costing us too. <laughs> we are missing those moments of magic because we want everything to be more perfect. Then also... Perfectionism is causing you to never letting people in fully um, for so many reasons. I talk about that in different videos too, but you have to be perfect before you let people in. They have to be perfect before you let people in because otherwise the risk of rejection and abandonment is just too great and we're not doing that is what your fear brain says. And so that will feel very lonely, very, very, very lonely. And that's not a good feeling to have, which kind of reinforces the perfectionism because when you feel lonely you feel like you you and life and the world has to be more perfect because otherwise when things go wrong you have to deal with that on your own and so that kind of just reinforces each other whereas as you um know that support is there things don't have to go perfectly because you know that when things go wrong I'm supported. I'm safe. So, yeah, perfectionism is causing you to not let people in fully and not really receive that support, which makes you feel lonely, which makes you more perfectionist, which, you know, that whole spiral. Um, so, instead of striving to get to a certain place, to get to that perfect place, being pushed by 
purpose is so much more fulfilling. And like I said, I am still struggling with perfectionism here and there. But in what I do, what I love doing, I am definitely being pushed by purpose way more than that I'm um, hindered by perfectionism. The perfectionism is now pretty much only focused on me being a parent and wanting to be the best parent, <laughs> the perfect parent to my daughter. Um, so that is, I think, the only area right now that is really affected by that uh, or the way that I'm affected by perfectionism. So I know the difference from wanting to be perfect like I did with doing this when I started seven years ago. I was... I wanted to do everything perfectly. I had to do everything perfectly. And it just, it took so much away from me being able to tune in, to trust myself, to follow my compass and my intuition of what was needed and what what I needed to say and what needed to come out. And, um, and now that really has gone. I hadn't really realized that, but now that I'm doing this video, I realized that that perfectionism in what I do is is gone, and I'm I'm really just driven by purpose, um, not expecting a certain result or or trying to get to a certain place. I just do whatever um, feels good, really, uh, and that is such a world of difference. So following your own compass and intuition. Um, that's where you kind of want to go and and knowing that there's enough and you are enough already and everything that is here and that you have is enough and that you are safe so yeah let's heal this even more i'm developing in the online program healed and happy um a whole extra module on this to really get to the roots of this so Right now I'm diving into it and I love it um, and really seeing like, okay, in the areas that I did heal that perfectionism, what did I do and how can I do that now with um, allowing myself to be a parent who is driven or pushed by purpose instead of trying to be this perfect image. Um, so yeah, it's it's liberating it's liberating that's what i already know to release perfectionism and to be grateful for what you already have and that whole gratefulness thing sometimes is almost like an indoctrination like you have to be grateful and i don't ever want you to feel guilted into having to be grateful it's just you really just do that for you because it feels good because it just takes your focus away from what isn't there to what is there and I think just gratitude is such a powerful almost antidote to perfectionism but it doesn't completely heal it at the root because your perfectionism is driven by fear and unless you release or heal that fear it is really hard to not fall back into those perfectionist tendencies so i'm already feeling such a difference in uh, i've been tapping a lot on on perfectionism also so interesting what you then what you then find out like where the perfectionism is coming from what the causes are so for me there were three very very distinct causes in me being the perfect wanting to be the perfect parent um so one came from my dad one came from my mom and one came from being bullied at in um primary school and just releasing those one by one is just oh, it's so liberating i just i've been tapping for seven years and it's still magical it's still magical how you can see the world in a completely different way after you've been tapping on a certain subject and and just feel like a completely different person but more yourself if that makes sense yeah just releasing those layers of things that don't serve you anymore okay now i'm rambling so <laughs> I am uh, I'm gonna um, finish up this video um, let me know if this was valuable to you again I really do not want to scare you but it I think it is so important to know what something is costing you so that you feel powerful enough and strong enough to really release that um, so that's why that's why I did this video 
I am so happy you are here <laughs> and I will see you in the next one.